Welcome, everyone. It is Wednesday live stream uh, during the market hours. Uh, glad everyone could join. Welcome to the Kendall Report. Uh, see quite a few of you have already signed in here, so this is cool. Uh, we're going to cover, uh, I'm going to do a couple of things that we do in our live room when we start here uh, just to get warmed up and get uh, some orientation what's going on. Uh, it's been a pretty good short covering rally. They were selling the market down to uh, about uh, 30 minutes ago, we, we printed the low of the session on the S&P, and now we've rebounded um, about 10 handles plus. Um, on this setup on this page, on the far right-hand corner is the five-minute, excuse me, five-minute S&P chart up on the uh, far right-hand side. So, um, I'm, um, yeah, so basically what the plan is for today is we'll, we'll, set things up ahead of time. We'll talk a little bit about the Fed probably in the next half hour or so. And I'm actually really getting geared up for next week because I'm going to be live during the markets from uh, going forward uh, starting next week on uh, next Monday on on November 7th. You're, uh, I will be live, coming live at 9.15. That's pre-market about 15 minutes. The plan is to talk about what uh, set up the pre-market, what we're looking at on the day. In the past uh, four years now, I've been doing videos overnight for the next day, so I'm going to do them live. So uh, we're working on a couple things here just while we're uh, waiting for the room to fill up a, a bit more. Uh, a couple things we're looking at, uh, we're putting together a Discord that's going to just uh, put a lot of information I used to do pre uh, overnight a lot of this stuff is going to be live in the discord and we're working on putting some bots together as always it's much more complex than you think it will be to get there but we're getting there and uh, we're putting that that puzzle together and uh, as I've been telling you I just want to set up a little bit I'm uh, uh, talking a little bit about what's going on uh, with the channel it is going to change a lot we're not going to do any more evening setups um sorry those of you that enjoy your evening with me we'll have to find something else to do uh, but i think this is going to be a great setup because i'm planning on having a number of different segments there in a week uh, i'm going to expand my coverage i've been really hammered down every night just doing these five markets that i cover typical markets and maybe add one or two in there but i'm actually going to have days where I focus on different commodities as well as stocks and some portfolio ideas. So we're really going to start to address our entire community here and in this new, uh, I guess, new format that I'm putting together. So I'm sure it's going to be, uh, it's going to be a learning experience as I put things together. Looks really good on paper. We'll see how it executes and make our adjustments as we go along. But uh, the plan is probably an hour and 15 minutes to an hour and a half. I'm still working on the schedule. Uh, that's that's going to be every day, 9.15 to at least uh, 10.30, possibly 10.45. And then uh, there'll be a break. And those of you that are in our live room, uh, I'll be back on Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday. I'll be in the live room at 1 o'clock. So there'll be a, a break for me and then we'll come back in. So I'm, I'm looking forward to this new format. Um, but this is, I think, you know, I've, I've thought a lot about this, and I just think it's going to be much more useful, some of the things that I do, than trying to do them overnight. I know a lot of my European folks and overseas folks that are watching me are going to be a little disappointed. I've already heard some feedback from you. I appreciate it. And uh, the goal is actually for me to be way more focused and during during the market session, and that's really uh, where I guess where I shine the best anyway. And I think this is going to be a, a lot of insight and things. So, uh, so much for what's about to happen. Let's talk about today. Uh, it looks like the room's pretty full. We got about 250 people here, so that's good. Uh, so let's start talking about uh, what we're looking at today. I mean, this has been uh, you know, it's sort of like every election is the biggest election that there's ever been. Now, this is the biggest Fed meeting that's ever been, but so was the previous one and the previous and the previous. And, you know, the anticipation around this Fed event, I think, is 
is interesting because everybody's got their their own little dot plots, if you will, only they're 75 basis points for today's meeting, then 50 and 25. I'm of the opinion, we'll start talking about the Fed here for a minute, and then we'll go through and take a, a, a quick scan of what's going on in the markets here in a minute. But I'll set this up that I'm of the opinion that we're going to end up probably at four and a half, five percent And depending on how the yield curve gets structured, it will tell us a lot about on the back end of the curve whether we're going to see the, the, how the 10 and 30 are going to be positioned and, and including the, all the way through the spectrum beyond the Fed funds, right? So Fed funds are likely to end up minimum at four and a half. And it all comes down to how sticky the inflation is and a whole lot of stuff that you and I could sit here and speculate about, but we don't know. So we're going to have to wait until we get these actual numbers and make sure that we're anticipating them appropriately. So I, as far as I'm concerned, we end up at four and a half. They lock them down at four and a half. All this stuff of, of the pivot and maybe... Uh, backing off on QT and all that, I, I don't think they're going to do it. I don't know how far they will go, but I think they're still looking to break something and nothing's broken. So a conversation I've been having with you folks on uh, just in general as far as what's going on in the economy, it's hard to find uh, when you go out into the world what you see uh, here in America anyway. I, I know that a lot of folks are uh, telling me, I, I talk to people all over the country all the time, and I'm asking them, hey, what's it like? You go to go to Costco, you go to the store, what's it like? And the parking lots are full, everybody's spending money, seems to be money everywhere. So as I've said, it's kind of hard to argue with the current administration that the economy isn't really strong, because it is. You know, we had uh, the Jolts report actually increase everybody i saw numbers where everybody thought we'd be under 10 million to 9.5 even and it went the other way to 10.7 so the labor market this is some of the challenges that the fed is dealing with we all know this just putting them out there is that the labor just market continues to be very resilient it's like it's hard to call the call the recession i was in the camp that we were already in a recession we had the two quarters of negative gdp and that that happened, right? So we get this last one. We get a little better print than what we thought, 2.6 on GDP for, for Q3, uh, Q3, as far as the first look goes. Will that continue? I think so. I mean, I don't see anything out there. I, I've had some experiences and shared experiences with other people, and they've shared mine. So maybe in the comments you could put in there, uh, you know, what's it like in your area, even if you're in Europe or wherever. I think Europe's a lot different scenario, but here in the U.S., uh, it's a pretty robust environment, and uh, it's it's hard to uh, argue that. And I've also said I don't know anybody that's unemployed, so that's that's the other the other thing that's out there is everybody's working. There's 10.7 million supposed jobs out there, and I saw I forget what it is, man. I I meant to write this number down, I did not, but I think it was like there's uh, I think three jobs or even nine jobs, correct me, whatever, if you know this number of uh, number of uh, jobs to how many people could fill them. I, I know it. I know for sure it's probably three. But anyway, I saw this number stat. So it's like a three to one ratio. So if everybody that could work was working, there'd still be seven million jobs or something like that. So it's a, it's a crazy environment. So the Fed is trying with raising the rates to affect this this element in itself. So I think this is my my theory is that they're going to continue to along this line of increasing at until they see something start to crack. We know that real estate is done, right? Uh, real estate's frozen at best. Uh, there's uh, just was talking to uh, just a few minutes ago. About an hour ago, I was talking to a commercial lender. Said the business is completely dead. Uh, there's nothing going on, and so the the point is, is that uh, and there's not any any reason it's going to go on. We saw construction spending actually a little better yesterday, but that's for all construction, not just housing. When you look at housing, you can see it's an absolute disaster. 
So the only thing that is in a recession is housing. And uh, everything else looks pretty robust. So I'm just looking at some of my other notes here. I think that, uh, you know, obviously the real estate's been affected by the high mortgage rates and, and those things are going on. We're looking at over seven, seven plus percent now on mortgage rates. So that, that's been, um, that, that's going to continue to keep real estate in check. We're seeing, uh, I did something interesting on realtor.com. I went to different multiple areas in the country and found listings and I hearted them, which I'll get notifications. And I went through last night out of uh, uh, 200 and some homes that I put on notification. There uh, was about 30% of all the homes on there. I got notifications of price drops. And so there's obviously something going on. Uh, you guys, have, folks have heard me talk about in the past that, you know, if you want it, you want a deal, it's going to be the new homes that where the deals are going to be. There's already 25, uh, 30% plus discounts in certain areas, especially even some of the hot areas like Austin, Texas, San Antonio. I know uh, Texas market, um, Phoenix is completely blowing up, but there's a lot of deals on, on the big national home dealers. And those folks are absolutely discounting to get rid of their inventory. And so anyway, enough about real estate. So uh, just a couple more mentions and then we'll, we'll do what I call the round robin. We'll take a look at what's going on in the, uh, in the markets right now, what the setup is. Uh, we've got 45 minutes until the, the decision. We pretty much know what it is, right? Because they tell us what it is. There's 100% transparency on everything, thanks to uh, Helicopter Ben. Uh, he started this. The um, just looking at uh, some of the other things that uh, the economy, you know, manufacturing came in a little better. Fifty point two yesterday. ISM. Uh, we're looking at. Um, I already discussed the activity in the economy. ADP came out two thirty nine. That's pretty much in line. So we had all of those metrics come out tomorrow. We're um, we're going to get you know claims and some other numbers, but the big numbers on Friday for unemployment are are expected to be uh, in the 250 range, and I suspect they'll be on the money. You have to know whatever we hear from Powell today, the Fed already knows all the reports, and they already they have preliminary reports on everything, so it's, they're not surprised by anything. They know what's going on, and I like I said, QT will continue. The raising of rates will continue to at least this this yield uh, this rate increase today is going to put us at uh, three seventy five to four percent. So we'll call it four on the top side, and then the next one, if they do fifty, there's your four fifty. Then a quarter is four seventy five, and I think they could get to five percent. And it that number, they're going to tell you today the same thing they've been telling you. They're going to tell you that they're data dependent. We're I mean. I'm pretty sure that most of us that are watching, that you're watching me right now, that we could all write today's script out before it happens. I mean, uh, you, you go back to, like I said, the days of Helicopter Ben, and the whole goal is don't surprise anybody. It's, it, it's, the, it's the opposite of, of the days of Volcker and even Greenspan where they wanted to surprise and shock the market into a direction. Now it's it's just bump it. We don't want to upset anybody, don't want to offend anyone. We just want it to go smoothly. Here's what we're going to do. And that's how that's how this is going. I don't know how this we get uh, through this scenario. And I just want to talk just a little bit about inflation. I'll go on this little rant for a little bit longer. And then we'll get into looking at the market set up in the next half hour. But the the entire, you know, <laughs> the, this entire narrative around inflation that they're going to get it down to 2% is total BS. It's not going there. It's probably never going to drop much below four unless we end up in a depression. Then it then we'll have we'll have, you know, a deflation. We won't have inflation. So maybe they break it so hard that we end up in a deflationary scenario. There's certainly plenty of people with that theory and trying to play out the 1929s and all that stuff. 
I happen to think that something different is going on, and I, I actually don't see the depression coming. I don't think that's what's going to be. But what I, what I do see is that a lot of these inflationary elements that have come into the market are not only are they sticky, they are embedded forever. And those would be, it's really hard to, to, for people to get raises, uh, increases, and uh, wages and tell somebody, okay, inflation is better now. We're, gonna, we're, we're not going to pay as much as we did last week. That's never going to work. So the, the cost of labor has probably forever been increased on, on a relative basis. If you look at the whole narrative in society right now, you know, it's everything. It, they're trying to make it, this is, I think it's kind of funny. It's a, a NASCAR analogy. They're trying to make the economy and all the people like NASCAR. Everybody has the same car. It's up to the driver and you know you can just go like one second faster than the other guy, and you win the race if you can maintain that. Uh, that's what they are trying to do, and it's never worked that way, and it's not going to work that way in the past. But what I'm saying here is that these wages will be embedded. There's other prices of things that are, are going to be embedded. What's the favorite line that you hear out there? Onshoring which is deglobalization, right? Everything needs to come back. We need to make everything in America, wherever what country you're in, whatever you do, you have to have certain elements of your economy being produced so you don't have to depend on outside source. Listen, I'm an older guy. I remember when they were telling us that globalization was going to be the best thing ever. You know, we were going to have this massive supply chain, which we had when COVID happened, it broke it, and it broke everything. And, you know, it disrupted all the supply chains. And once you disrupt something, sort of think about this analogy, folks. Think about being at an airport, and it's the winter time, and a big storm hits the East Coast. And um, hang on one second, sorry. Uh, a, a big storm hits the East Coast. And um, planes get disrupted. What happens? It takes days and days and days just to get the schedules back online. Well, it's the same thing what they did with COVID, but they, they broke things and things had to be completely reorganized. People had to build manufacturing and other things to, to compensate for what got broken. And so it's really a very... Uh, I would just say it's a very interesting thing that's going on from the standpoint of uh, of the world and the, and everything. You see, transports are actually starting to act really well. So, anyway, I, I think I made my point. And I I just look in a couple comments here that somebody made, um, uh, and and I agree with a, a lot of these comments. Somebody said inflation is permanent tax; it never goes backwards. It really doesn't. I mean, if you look at the purchasing power of the dollar, you know, the first thing I always do, uh, my, uh, my wife and I are big fans of old cowboy movies, you know, the old John Wayne stuff and, and even beyond that. And I'm always thinking that the guy says, I paid $1,000 for this bar. So what was what was $1,000 in today's dollars, you know, in 1856 dollars and those type of things? Because the... The deterioration of the dollar just is is constant. I mean, even if you look at any metric, they're going to say this is in 1980 dollars or in 2000 dollars, whatever. So, at, especially after what we've seen in in this planet with all this massive um, MMT and all this uh, really debasing of all of the currencies in the world, and you see what's going on with the dollar. So. I'm going to try to get out of this loop I'm in. And I, I just saw a comment here. Uh, Robert Earp says, uh, economy is good. Central and Eastern uh, NC as good as ever. I would, I'm telling you folks, it, 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 it is good out there. I, I, I'm, I'm actually, I don't, it's like, I'm not one of those guys that, because maybe I, 
agree or don't agree or I don't like the party that's in power. If the economy is doing good, it's doing good. And like I said, things are, are amazing, I think. And they're not just good. Unfortunately, if you're in real estate, they're not so amazing. And, you know, the, uh, I can just tell you that, you know, like I said, whether it's commercial or residential real estate, it's just dead right now. I mean, completely dead. It, and so uh, that's just how it is right now. I appreciate everybody's comments and stuff here. And I, so let's, go, let's take a look around what's going on. I just uh, take, take a look on this right here. And I want to go through. I want to go through a couple of things that I think are are interesting. I have on here. These are the top volume leaders uh, over here on the right hand side of this screen. And uh, Amazon's up on top again. I'm going to just click through a couple of these stocks as we get uh, set up and and get ready for the decision. And but let's, let's look at all, all these stocks. You'll see it in the screen on the left there when I click on it. Amazon just plummeting at 94.30. The little spike we had the other day, the low was 97. So we're $3 below the low the other day. So Amazon is just getting hammered. And I'm going to... Not I, I can't go into this subject I want to go into because it will take me the next two hours to get out of it. So I'm saving something here for uh, for, for tomorrow's uh, tomorrow night's live stream, which will be the last nightly live stream. So I want to go out uh, in a, in a good way and reveal something that I see happening. But let's so Amazon AMD is next. I know there was some news out. Was up, got a reversal going on on that. Uh, Tesla, Tesla's rolling over again. I know everything was was good. Musk got the the Twitter deal done. Everything now is starting to roll a little bit. Uh, I'm not going to do deep analysis or anything, but I just want to go through these top movers. Apple is also trying to roll over. We're just flattening out here. There's just nothing. Nobody. I, I don't mean nobody, but. I uh, iPhone 14 sales are terrible, and I I don't I, I'm an iPhone user. I still have my 12. I thought I was going to update here. I'm not sure I'm going to. Uh, I'm actually looking at uh, some other platforms right now, and I think a lot of people are doing that as well. But Apple stock, while it's it rallied, this is all daily charts we have. So it came off the over the last uh, going back to mid October off of those lows it it reversed and has been fairly positive but you know then the, uh, we got in Nvidia that's been an upslope but so meta what, what a complete disaster this company is people laughed at me a number of years ago that's I said I, I said you know somewhere five ten years Facebook will just won't even be in existence. As somebody pointed out to me, only old people like me use Facebook. I don't use Facebook. I, I hate it. But the, the point is, is that this thing is just continuing to shrink and uh, Zuckerberg is dug in on this, on the whole metaverse concept. Look at this, Google. Google's down, Google's trading at its lowest levels. You look at, you look at some of these declines in these big techs and I, uh, I'm i gonna start, uh, here in a minute, let's go down to Airbnb. Got getting crushed for ten percent. Uh, here's another. Uh, that previous was Alphabet. Uh, let's go to Microsoft. All these all these tech stocks are rolling down. And just looking at a, a couple others here, and you know, Uber. Uber's actually done fairly well. Uh, they they that's one of the other things that actually points to the economy being okay is that Uber saying they are not they're not seeing any change in in activity so that that's a that's a good thing as well and of course down at the bottom here we got BA which is uh, amazing that it, it's been able to get a big downward reversal now it's up the volatility there is pretty crazy Baba is actually trying to put in a low 
And so I'll go through some more. Yeah, I'll go into some more stuff. So is this, is it? Yeah. So is this too loud? Maybe it's the speaker. Is that better? I'm sorry if that was loud. I have a compressor on this thing, so it's going on. So yeah, sorry if that's very loud. So anyway, uh, let me know if that's better. But all of this stuff that's going on right now is very, uh, there's a shift going on, I think, on the, on the planet. And I mentioned this, you know, com coming back and uh, deglobalization and all that. I think what we're going to see is, and I'm just going to do a quick review and I'll show you some of these stats. But I have a long-term projection that it's possible that small cap stocks are going to double from their current values. Uh, the index, we'll, we'll say the Russell 2000, it's going to be up a substantial um, amount. And this is long term, this is over the next couple of years. So I always ask myself, I tell you folks all the time, what would I do, uh, you know, if something, if I have a technical or quantitative expectation that I'm building, I always ask myself, I call it reverse fundamentals. If that's what it says is likely to happen on technicals, what would make that happen? And the only thing that's going to make the small caps happen is that the back on to the onshoring and bringing manufacturing and other industries back to the countries, and this may be universal, I am in the process of making some analysis of potential target companies and I'm going to build in our portfolio expert models, I'm going to build a special strategy just for this thought once I get it done. It's probably going to take me a number more weeks, but I think it is going to be the place to be positioned. And what we're seeing here with, just like I just showed you just briefly, with Google and Apple and Microsoft, all these tech stocks have peaked out and maybe they'll come back and rally again. But I think we're going to see a shift from these large caps and the mid cap sector is going to start to mid and small cap is going to be where the action's at. And that's actually a sign of a healthy economy and that things are going to roll over. Uh, some folks, uh, some of you think that interest rates are high right now. They are not. And uh, I'm trying to remember what year, 1986, I bought a house when I was living in California and my mortgage rate was 13 and a quarter, my mortgage. Didn't even think twice about it, just got the mortgage. So it was like a, a credit card loan, right? But that's that's coming out of Jimmy Carter days. That was a lot less than what it was uh, before, uh, just a, a few years before that, a couple of years before that. This was roughly 19, 1985, I think, is when that when that when I did that. Obviously, as rates continue to drop, you refi and you do those things. But the the point is that. Rates aren't even high right now, and they were artificially low. If you would have been looking at what the risk in the economy was and what rates should have been over the last five or six years, it would have been something much, much different than what, what we're looking at right now. So, you know, just know that that is ex exactly... Um, what what's going on here? We we've got a lot more potential to to the upside on these rates. I've shown you some of some of those numbers. Let's see what time are we getting to be here? Half past the hour, so we get another half hour. And yeah, so I'm looking at just kind of let's let's uh, go through some of the things I go go through in the middle screen here. I'll put a cursor on it over here. This is where we're looking at the current market environment from the indices, uh, S&P down 25.50. The RTY, which is the Russell futures down 28.155. The Russell's been stronger, but I mentioned just last night that we'd already hit the 200. Looks like we were gonna back off. We're doing that. and But the Russell kind of led, led that, that at least move to the 200. And I think this back off, we'll, we'll see I'll do some analysis on this before we leave today. We've got, I mean, we're a half hour in. We've got two and a half hours to go. So there's a lot to go on. I do have a screen set up. Unfortunately, I have 
a Google TV and they've decided that on YouTube, I can't, I can't go and stream Google TV on YouTube. So I can't show you the video, you don't need to see it, but when the decision comes out, I'll play it so you can hear it anyway, and we'll, we'll listen together, okay, uh, from that standpoint. But anyway, um, so we're looking at uh, the composite down 1.1, just the things I was just talking about with the big text, uh, the composite just can't seem, uh, can't seem to, to uh, rally at all and that's going to be a continuing problem. So we, we go down to interest rates, and if you follow me on the channel on a regular basis, what I've been talking about is I think we're going to get locked in. The 10 year is going to be a 392 to, we're going to just round it off 410 kind of range, but we're going to see a consolidation here. I don't think anything that's going to happen in the next hour where it's going to change that configuration. We may get a spike in volatility, um, one of the things I'll make sure that we have up when the news comes up, I want you to be on the level two screen that I have that we use for trading. And I want to have you see how the liquidity is just going to disappear on the news. And uh, I'll, I'll set you up for some other things as we get closer to that. Uh, five year down point, all the interest rates across the board, pretty much down the same. The 10 years down 0.35, five year down point. One six right now, the 30 year is minus 0.95. And so all of a sudden, if you recall, I've been talking about how the 30 year got really way, way above the, the 10. So the 1030 spread started to steepen quite a bit. It's just flattening like crazy right now. 404 versus right now looking at 408 and a half. That, that number was uh, almost 15, 17 basis points at one stage. So, you know, we've seen a, a real flattening in the yield curve there. As far as anything else going on, the, right now the dollar's flat, nothing going on there, and gold's flat, every, everything's flat. Crude oil is pushing up at 89, 86. I've been talking to you folks about probably... 92 is going to be about the top end of that range, but I do have some objectives, some uh, Fibonacci projections up to 108 plus, which right at the moment doesn't look very likely that's going to happen. As far as anything else goes, VIX at 26. Uh, VIX got up to about 34 when, at one stage there. And so um, at, the, at these most recent lows, and now here we are back at 26. And I'll go through a couple other screens here in just a minute. I'm just... Yeah, um, yeah. The, the uh, thanks, Mike. Yeah, the uh, Paul's conference call was at two thirty. We'll we'll listen to the the announcement, see what happens. Uh, normally, I don't like listening to that that call, and a lot of times on these live streams when I'm live with the Fed, if you folks would actually. Uh, chime in, let me know if there's something that was said that would be awesome so I can watch the line, so I can kind of focus on the things that I'm, I'm presenting to you in, in this room. So let's take a look at something I haven't looked at for a while, and I'm going to bring you to that screen so you can see it. It's just in the middle of the page is lumber prices. And I'm even going to plot this. This is the on the left-hand side, the bigger chart on the screen right now. If we go over, this is a daily lumber. This is weekly. And we're, we're just seeing, I'm going to go one more step. Uh, I think this will work. Let's see here. Yeah, so this is, this is monthly. So what we're doing, and this is, Basically, what I was talking about, these prices that are getting embedded into the economy, we're looking at lumber prices starting to stab stabilize where at these levels where we are right now. So it, it's likely that lumber is not going back to the previous Uh, lumber is not going back to its previous prices, 
uh, I've got, I left the chart here. It may come down a little bit more, but even when you look at the big scheme of things, if you go back to 2019, 2018 prices, we're never going back there, I don't think. If we do, that means there's a complete depression and nothing's going going on there. Um, you know, so, you know, um, I saw a comment here and, uh, you know, the economy is strong and yes, prices are higher. And I, I'm not, uh, I, I know that's going on, that's part of the deal, but folks so far continue to pay the higher prices. I think that's one of the annoying things that I see, especially if you watch, you know, whether it's uh, Bloomberg or CNBC or any financial show or anything that Yahoo or any of these people put out there. The, the thing that you hear is that these companies still have pricing power. And, you know, it's it's kind of offensive when they say that, because really, what does that mean? That, that we're still stupid enough to keep paying these guys more money. So uh, it's not squeezing. It, they haven't hit the point where their their sales are dropping, and that's what Uber and a lot of these people are telling us. It, it's you know, as much as I'm talking against it, I would say that it is uh, also realistic that these things are going on. So um, see here, what else is going going on and around? Yeah, we just got a big reversal on the, uh, if you notice on the chart up in the far right-hand side, we got we got a reversal there on uh, to the upside. We're getting some short covering ahead of, of the, the Fed. We're 20 minutes out. Let's go over to a, a different screen here. And let's go over to level two. You'll see this rally I'm talking about on, on the screen here. And I think that's... Um, uh, We'll, we'll leave it like this for a second here, but this this big move up is is pretty substantial. Let's go over and, and take a look. I want to take a look at a couple other things here. This is um, an hourly chart on the S&P 500, and I want to run the augos, and this is something that's going to be become a feature next week when I'm live during uh, market order hours, early on in the morning, pre-market, I'm, I'm setting up a, uh, exactly what I want, want to present then. But one of the things that it's important is that we get a uh, kind of look forward for the next couple hours. Now, we, we our PPMs that we have, the that you can get the WaveTech indicators, the AUGO that we built in here is suggesting this is on an hourly basis the next two or three hours, believe it or not. It's not projecting a lot of, of um, uh, volatility, but it is suggesting that we're going to stay in a negative mode here, that we're not going to get over the second derivative. So this indicator here where my, in, where, where, where my cursor is right now is tracked to the 10 period moving average. I do want to point out something, though. You see this arrow with the number four on it. That suggests this is the, you hear me talk about the market grid all the time. This market grid is on here. This is a, a buy signal. We, we, when we close below the STX, it's a buy signal. What we did was we built an indicator. It's not released yet uh, that tells you how many times this happens. And we, we had a four spot over here, got a, got a low. This is our hourly graph. We've got another four spot. And the, the augos are suggesting that what's going to happen, the white line here, let me make this a little bigger so you can see it. The, the white line on this page here is a simple 10 period moving average. And it, what's, what's saying is going to happen is it's going to continue to decline but it's going to lose some of its downward momentum. And we're trading right here on the 200 hour moving average. So we've been hanging in on either side of this on most of the trades that, that are coming, coming out right now. And so this is just telling us there's a potential buy here. Algos are suggesting stability uh, in in the way that we could get into a trading range in this in this area here, I'll just draw in a couple of things. So while we get set up here for the for the range, is really that it's it's setting up that 
we'll probably get a maybe a little trading range here before we ultimately decide you know which way we break out of this box and for right now with the the algos actually showing uh, this i'm just drawing in some of this formation it looks like we're going to be sideways probably staying within the grid but with a with a downward bias and there could like i said when we get the news we're going to get a spike we're 15 roughly 15 minutes out right now so we're just starting to set this up but this is telling us that still let me erase a bunch of this junk so you can see this as this this is the 10 period moving average it is still declining the 20 this is what i talk about as the angle of attack so this is just telling us that this market grid here this is what i'm suggesting is, is the market is likely to stay within this grid now we could get a volatility spike and get get a crazy move out of here chances are we will and but it, it looks to me that at least the augos here are suggesting that there's probably some vulnerability to the upside. I'm going to clear all this out so you can see it. Some vulnerability, at least for the market to rally back to this 21 period moving average, 38.64. I think the high today has been 80 something. I want to say 84. Yeah, the high's been. Yeah, I don't. Ha I don't have it on my screen right now. So, but it, I think it's been in the 80s, 84 handle, something like that, and on the downside into the 30s. But this is probably some kind of range that we're going to get into. We'll see if we get a crazy spike. We usually do. And what will happen, and let me clear this out, over on the far side over here, here was a, a big spike in volatility. We'll get these spikes up, and then we fall back into, back into the pattern. What happens, you'll see this happen. This is uh, important. You'll, you'll see that the volatility, the WaveTech uh, market grid will adjust to the volatility and then it contracts. And there's often time, I'll, I'll kind of set you up for, for this uh, pattern right now, is a lot of times there's, a, there's an opportunity off these spikes. I've been in the live room, you get these big spikes up or down, you take the other side and there's a two to three minute trade. A lot of people are afraid to do it. That's why it works so well. <laughs> So that, you know, I, one of my old mentors and one of the guys that I used to work with on the trading floor uh, used to always say, he goes, if your position doesn't scare you, you didn't put enough on. So if you believe it, play it. Uh, just know that you have good techniques around what you're doing. And that, that was always a, an element that, that Mike would always throw out there. He goes, you're not, you're not afraid you didn't put enough on. So interesting and I used to think he was crazy and now I, I, I know what happens is when you have a large a position that's relative to you that is important you're going to pay a higher level of attention to the activity within that trade and sometimes people just like well I, I'm just going to buy it and see where it goes I'm going to hold it and then they look you know they, they don't watch it very closely and it's just stealing money and that's just that's just wrong. So you want if you put enough on, you won't let that happen. So uh, the, but yeah. So that's what the that's what the algos are telling us. We're going to go down the scale a little bit. Let's take a look at the five minute, uh, which is interesting. We've got this little uptrend. Let me change the scaling so you can see this a little better. So we're still getting a bid coming in here. The algos on a very short term basis are telling us we're going to stay positive. See what time we got here, folks. We're at uh, 10 minutes still. We're looking at about four or five bars. It looks like a positive tone. So maybe we're going to, this is a five minute graph. All goes are all pointing to the upside right now. They're, they're suggesting. And if, if you went back the, earlier before this rally, this, is, this has been what they've been telling us for the last several hours. We haven't watched it. So we're going to start to go more into a shorter term focus as we get into this news. And uh, I'm, I'm going to, on my other screen, I'm just going to see if uh, we'll, we'll do a couple of sound tests before we get there. And let me look and see what is, um, 
see what you folks are saying here and see if I can interact with you for a few minutes here. Yeah, you're welcome, Sean. Yeah, I just, uh, yeah, I have to tell you, is, um, these these augos are, they're pretty amazing. And they exist, by the way, because of a couple of people in this community that I was, I met, I was in, uh, in Switzerland in August, and I met with uh, somebody that presented this concept to me, and we managed to get a little, small little group together and put the math together. It's pretty amazing. So, uh, always a shout out to those folks. So let's just see if there's a. Uh... Let's see if I can get this sound. Let's do a couple sound checks. Uh, let me know how, if you can hear this effectively, okay? The good news for consumers and for businesses is that there's more available capacity now in the water. And when we talk about inflation, you know, we're, we're, we're removing some of those costs that are, that are driving inflation. Yeah, I mean, is this a short-term thing with China because of all these lockdowns? Or when you plan, uh, how, how do you plan? Because it's like, your business is almost subject to the whim of the Chinese president. Well, you know, Brian, part of the strength of C.H. Robinson is that we're a non-asset based asset light business that has a leading a leading presence, not only in the trans-Pacific trade lane, but also domestically here in both truckload and less than truckload. And we continue to diversify our forwarding business into other parts of the. OK, yeah, um, interesting, uh, folks, it looks like I lost my camera. So that's uh, very interesting. Um, hopefully I can, I can uh, get this back. This is kind of frustrating. I've never had that happen. Yep, I lost my camera. So uh, not that you guys needed to see me, so we may be uh, good. So good, I'm glad to... Uh, yeah, so I am quiet now because I turned things down. So, okay. <laughs> it's all good, folks. I'm trying to, I just had to, uh, for whatever reason, the camera stopped working. So I'm going to go on a non-camera page and just give me a second to see if I can get this back up and running. Look at that. I got it to work. Thank you. Thanks for your patience. Um, just looking at a couple comments coming through here, folks. Yeah, I don't need a, a tech support guy. It's all good. Um, it's Windows 11. <laughs> I hate this. I spent uh, a whole lot of time yesterday working on this computer. Some kind of chip error I'm getting. So anyway, we're here. Um, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, I have one of those, actually. Um, so let's, uh, let's get focused here on eight minutes out. Uh, look at... Uh, look, Look how these augos are predicting this thing is going to go up. The uh, What I've always talked about, you folks that have seen the PPMs here for a while, is when the PPMs get to a certain value, it tells you about the probabilities. I, I don't think I have it available, but uh, I would tell you, if you haven't already got the indicators, get them. I'm going to get you into the live room. I'm super excited, folks, about 
the change in the channel. I've really, it's been a, a, the last month or so, there's some elements. I'm kind of kind of uh, stressed on some of the elements that we're getting, but uh, I, that I, ha I don't have ready yet. But I keep telling myself it's only Wednesday. So, um, so we just got tried to get a little bit of rejection here. So what I'd like to do uh, coming into this, I'll turn the sound on when necessarily. I'm going to go off screen. We're, I'm just going to talk about what what what's going on. We're going to go to over to Trade Station and we're going to go to the level two stuff just so we can get a handle on on what the flow is and uh, I'll. Talk. I want you folks to see the order book. Uh, anybody that's been in live room knows that any of the trading, because of my uh, my floor experience and my and just trading in general, is the order book is one of the most important things to to have and to understand the the flows and ebbs and flows and watching uh, time and sale, looking for blocks of trades, all kinds of stuff that will give you an insight for what's going on. So I'm going to share when we get into this news that we're happening. We'll talk about the news, but then we'll we'll focus on the activity of the markets here for a little bit. And it'll just be on literally on a one uh, on the, the day trading platform uh, that we'll be focusing in out uh, on. And that way we'll, we'll have a, you'll get a good feel for the flow of what's going on. I suspect we're gonna see some crazy volatility here. So we got like five minutes to go. So let me get you uh, focused in on that screen just so we can we can get there that this is the one and what I'll do is let me get off off screen here and so what we'll uh, be f uh, focusing on let me just get you up to speed and like I said um, once we get the uh, the news to come out then we'll we'll listen to what it is we'll listen to the uh, the reading of the announcement and then we'll watch the markets while it goes, and then we'll focus in on, on this stuff. The formation on the far right right now is a dragon head formation. And typically, these dragon heads will, will resolve themselves to the, to the upside. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see what kind of volatility we get in the next four or five minutes and see what's going on. Right now, I can tell you already, already, I, unfortunately, I haven't had my eye on the order book. The order book is on the far left-hand side here. This is where you see the numbers in blue and red. These are the numbers of contracts on a bid or an ask. I can tell you in the olden days, like three years ago, these numbers used to be 150 by 200. And anymore, if you get to 80 to 100, those are big bids and offers. And the reason why volatility is clicked up, you just don't have... You don't have the, we'll say, market makers. There's nobody there. So right now we're we've got ten contracts. This thing's already thinned out, and it's there's nobody playing right now. Is what's happening. And I get it, right? This is where that's where we are right now. We're in that place where, uh, you know, there's there's no one playing. Why would you want to play ahead of this thing? I just saw there's a hundred and eighty six bid right here trading at three twenty five fifty three twenty five. They just that disappeared. Chances are it was a flash bid. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that you see looking at the order book. In the middle of the page, I'm just uh, where my cursor is up here. This is actually where the time and sales. So when you see all green, purples, there's bright greens, uh, bright reds. Those are blocks of trades. And so we'll be watching for Ago activity and all that kind of stuff. And we've got about... Uh, I think three and a half minutes or so to go. And just remember, you guys are 20 seconds plus delayed on on uh, YouTube. So you're going to hear me talking about stuff you, you've probably already seen on your local screen. So uh, no no way to no way to get around that. So very interesting. I just got a uh, error on Trade Station. This is what's been going on on this computer, and of course, right now with three minutes to go, it's going to get. It'll run fine as long as I uh, don't hit on any of these these pages here that are on my screen. 
if I hit one, it's going to shut it down. So uh, I'll be stuck using, not stuck, but I'll have to use TradingView for the rest of the show. Otherwise, I have to reboot my computer. This is so frustrating. I spent an hour and a half um, with the tech people yesterday troubleshooting this. Captain Jim James, man, I haven't seen you around for a while. Um, yeah, thanks for that. that, that that's actually, uh, somebody said if you, if you pause it and for a few minutes and then put it on 1.25, then everything sp uh, goes. All right, so um, let's see if we can, if we can get this this sound going again, folks. Oh, this this Kelly guy I can't handle him. He can't say ours. I feel sorry for him. Yeah, I don't think they're going to raise raise a full point, but that would be. Um, that would be interesting. Let's take a look here. Uh, algos are actually, look at this, folks. The algos are, we are within bars of rolling over. So all of a sudden, that positive as we come into the hour here, this, this is the case. So I am going to turn on this sound and uh, you, just you guys confirm that it's happening because we're less than a minute out. Here we go. Easy on it. Yeah, you know, I think mm -hmm. Jerome Powell will, will be clear, clear. If, if he does, does indicate, indicate that perhaps, perhaps the next, next meeting or two will be a less, you know, aggressive, aggressive rate of, of uh, increases, increases, maybe, maybe lower, lower than the 75 basis points, points they've done, done in the last three, three meetings, meetings plus, plus probably, probably what they'll, they'll do today. today. Uh, he'll also, also make it very clear that that is not necessarily followed by some sort of pause. You know, a 50 basis point rate hike is still a very aggressive rate hike by any means. And so we are, we are continuing to see them tightening. We are well into restrictive territory. We've seen, you know, the 10 year, three month yield curve now invert for a few days. Um, and they are continuing down this path. So I think if Jerome Powell is going to try to thread that needle, he will try to say, yes, we may go at a slower pace, but no, this does not mean a pause is ahead. And for that pause to happen, of course, we'd need to hear uh, what all the other panelists have talked about inflation rolling over forward-looking indicators of inflation right. rolling over, which I think we're starting to see. Yeah, the language could be could be clear or it could be very, very, very subtle. Let's get to Kayla Tauschi now with the Fed decision. Tyler, a 75 basis point increase by the Federal Reserve, bringing the target range for the Fed's benchmark interest rate to three and three quarters to four percent. The decision for a fourth consecutive 75 basis point increase was unanimous, but the statement does add a new flexibility on the pace of future rate increases. The Fed now says that it must pursue monetary policy that is, in its words, sufficiently restrictive to return inflation to its 2% target over time. The Fed now says that in determining the future path for interest rates, it will consider what it calls the cumulative tightening of monetary policy and also the lags between its monetary policy actions and their impact on inflation and overall economic activity, acknowledging that there is a lag between the actions that it's taken to date and the impact that they've had on the economy so far, raising new questions about at what point the Fed could perhaps evaluate the impact of those actions and at what point they'll be fully baked in. Back to you. All right, Kayla, thanks very much. We appreciate, appreciate that. that. Yeah, yeah, let's, let's bring, bring in, in our, our panel, panel as we... So you guys could hear that, right? Yeah, so I, I had to turn my mic off. You guys are getting the echo off of that, so... Uh, anyway, we're trading uh, 93. I've actually tried to, to order, order film. You know, I, I just shorted them. I know that seems crazy uh, on a five lot. I'm just I, I'm just trying to do a quick scalp here on this thing. It's just volatility crazy on here. Um, but yeah, look, we trade all the way to 95. Wow, so they're still printing them up. And uh, this is the volatility I was talking about. Look at this bar on the five minute here. So, um, yeah, we're, we're definitely uh, got, got some, uh, some crazy volatility here for sure. Um,
Yeah, I've got it. I've just got Forward a scalp field. I've got a scalp order in there. Just just took it out. Uh, this thing will probably roll all the way back into uh, where we started. So let's uh, let's watch a couple of things here. I want to go over to uh, this screen here, just so you can see this crazy, crazy volatility. Uh, we're trading way outside of the bar, so. Uh, look how the algos adjusted to this. They were starting to show that we were going to get some some softness. We got the news, and all of a sudden, here we are. It's still showing that we're going going to stabilize here. Typically, these spikes, the initial reaction to this news, will come back into the pattern. But this is we expected to see exactly this. This is exactly what is is going on here from from that standpoint. And, you know, I'm just, uh, like I said, I'm expecting, I'm going to go back to trade station. Let's take a, let's take a look at the order book. Like I said, look at this. There's nine, just single digits. This, this is crazy volatility. There's just nothing out there at all. You know, that's why it, it's bouncing around so much that you can't even keep up with the, uh, with the, the, you couldn't quote these prints if you had to because there's no liquidity. So you're looking at uh, single digits. So a 200 lot order would move this market five or six handles. Otherwise, from like 3880 to 3886 in one trade. As a matter of fact, we just basically did that. We just went 86, uh, 85 to 90 in just a couple of trades. So when the order book gets blown up like this, it's impossible to trade in this environment uh, because nobody's actually really trading. This is what we're looking for is some kind of uh, stability here. And evidently, markets like the 0.75, everybody in the world, like I said uh, earlier when we started, that I thought that it was would have been very easy for any of us to write the script of what was going going to be said. And they... Just what I heard, uh, Steve Leisman was talking, uh, but, you know, the market action is just telling you what's going on. We're setting up, and I told you about that, that dragon head usually resolves to the upside. That's exactly what happened right one minute before that dragon head was there, and we blew it up, and crazy, crazy volatility on on the, on the downside as, as well. So that, that spike, let's take a look and see what that range was here. The range was 39 to 99, so 60 handles in five minutes. If we go over to the one minute, the range was, uh, I'm just trying to get the low, 39 to 78 in one minute. So 40 handles in one minute, and there was no liquidity. It was just all over the place, and we're, we're still... Still getting there. I think what, what's likely to happen is one of the patterns that we talk a lot about and I teach in using the WaveTech webs is a pattern that's trying to set up here now. We're going to find out if we get what we call a veil top and all of a sudden we, we roll back into the range. Everybody's probably, what time is it? We've got 25 minutes before Paul comes up to talk. Uh, maybe we'll listen to his opening comments. That might be worth doing. Um, um, I'm just looking at some comments that you folks have here. Yeah, so anyway, listen, this is, um, yeah, we've got basically on the one minute chart here, we've got a another, it's not a real clean one, but it's a dragon head. We still have the uh, the webs. You see all these lines. These are regression lines. They they set up formations and resistance. So what if we trade down into R2, R3 on these numbers, these little red dots that are on the page here, what that will do is it will it'll start to signify that we're probably getting close to rolling over. And I'll go over. Let's take a look at the Augos just to see what's happening. This is interesting. It shows on the on PPM one Augo 
is saying in four or five bars, next five, five, six minutes, the it's going to roll over again. And we already got a red bar forming here now. At, we're at 86. So it's going to be interesting. Typically, we'll probably come back to the 200 period moving average. This is a five minute chart. I said one. This is a five minute chart. So about 10, 15 minutes of this. Guess what? Right when Paul starts talking, it looks like the market is trying to consolidate here. And it's really hard. Let me change the scaling a little bit. It's really hard. Uh, the market grid, this is something I talk a, a lot about. When these events happen and you're intraday trading, it, it blows up everything. Now, there's no gaps on here. We actually built something into the, the indicators for intraday trading if there's gaps that you can normalize the chart. So when you get a spike, you'll notice that all three of these indicators that are on this page here are all in this big bubble, this spike. And what they're trying to do and what the algos are saying is they're going to normalize again. So once that takes uh, about 10 bars, whatever the length of the indicator, 10, 21, 40, is going to take that many bars to actually uh, get that. So what we can do here is I can go to inputs. I'm going to, I'm going to turn ignore the gaps on and... Let's see if that, there's no real gap here, so it's not going to work. Um, yeah, so we can, what we have to do then is we, we've got to wait for the, this normalization to happen. So typically, if you're in a, in a market like this, folks, this is a little education on intraday trading. If you're in a market like this, I don't, you could take a, a stab like I think it's too high, they're going to come back in, all that. But when you're looking at formations, you're trying to trade off an, a normal environment, this is not the place to do those kind of trades. There's nothing wrong with saying uh, they shouldn't be trading at 38.90, I'm going to sell them here. That's okay. But what I'm saying is if you're looking at trends, and especially if we go back to trade station here, what we're going to see is the order book. We just see erratic trading. You know, we're, we just traded 86. We're down. And this is starting to form one of those veil tops right now as we speak. Uh, you can see, uh, I'm going to draw this in, at this opportunity to show you folks some, some things. Uh, there's almost a thousand of us out there. So let me show you what what is one of these these patterns that that we have. So you'll see these these cro these webs here and what typically will happen is this they all start to roll over and they get this they'll they'll start to form like the this veil over the top and we're already we're already crushing it as i as i'm talking about it and so this is when we get this veil a lot of times we end up right back right back into the range like i was talking about so but uh what we watch for on the webs is if they start to cross up again, then then there's a, a, a different pattern here. Let me just erase all that junk. So if we start to get where these webs start to cross, then there'll be a different pattern. It would be a continuation pattern. So when you're you're watching this type of action, what you're looking at here is really just that the the pattern that is setting up, if we see these top webs start to roll, looks like they want to, we're probably going to print under 80 here. Uh, it's 38, 80, 75, 50, just traded uh, 80, even there they are. Look at that, 78. They're just, they're, this thing's rolling over and probably heading back into the range that we started in. And all of a sudden we'll be back 45, 55 if this continues. And uh, this whole little spike, this reaction, the initial reaction is usually the one that you fade. And uh, we're starting to try to get some crossover. So, and I would tell you in the next two, two minutes, the chart on the, over here, where I have my cursor right now, that, that chart is actually the one minute. The one in the middle is the five minute. And I'm just going to uh, keep some stuff up here. Right now, this is the extreme where I'm putting my arrows on this five minute chart here. That is the extreme range that's being projected. What's going to happen 
is these things are going to start to contract in. So volatility will stabilize here. We still have the order book totally out of whack here. Like I said, single digits. So they're, they're just jumping things all over. We got crossovers on the one. So the veil top is being negated as we speak. Uh, and But this volatility is going to contract on the five minutes. So we hung out here. We're in our typical live room. We would we would be looking to see what kind of volatility sets up and see if there's any anything on there that we could we could target to look at a trade. And I'm going to show you. We're going to go back to the augos right now and just take a look here. So augos are saying we're going to stay in this range. This is the five minute chart, and like I said, um, let's see how far. What do we have left here? We are one minute and 30 seconds away from an update. So we'll hang out and stay on this page. Just looking at some comments while this, this next minute is closing out here. See what you guys are talking about. Okay. So, uh, like I said, uh, this is saying stabilization. Let me keep this uh, on the screen for a moment, and let's draw in some expectations here. And like I said, this is. Let me get the the color, so we'll we'll map this out. So this grid is going to start doing like this. It'll probably do this, and meanwhile, the bars in the middle are going to stay in some kind of range here. Ultimately, down the road, we're probably 15, 20 minutes out, that we'll, we'll get into a place where a decision will be made off of, off of this pattern here. So off of this bigger pattern over here, a decision will be made from the ideas of, you know, which way, which way do we break out of this little wedge? But it, it'll be set up, and what's nice is that PPMs are going to give us a lot of understanding of the directional movement. So that's, that's really uh, using all these tools together is pretty amazing. So I'm looking at, um, yeah, so uh, somebody's talking about we're trading between R1, R2 on the... Uh, on, on the market grid. So I have to close this out so I can use this again. So we're just kind of working this range. I'm going to go back and forth between platforms here, folks, just so we can see. Here's 84. So still kind of getting that veil. It looked like we're going to get crossovers. The veil is trying to trying to roll this. Like I said, the ultimate, what the veil would suggest is that we're going to come back into uh, 65, 60 handle on the downside. Uh, maybe, maybe it could hold around 76, 74 down in this lower pattern. But uh, right now, this, this veil is setting up uh, as a pretty substantial pattern. We've got about 15 minutes before... Mr. Paul comes up. I'll, I'll just continue to kind of cover this um, this action here from the standpoint of, of what's going on, and we're seeing also something else. And see if I can. I just want to get this scaling so you can see everything. It's very visible here on this chart here how the volatility is blowing up. Like I said, the next we just got a one minute update. We're still getting that roll, so the, the the critical level is right here at, at 79. They're pressing them right now, trying to press this low. And if they, they break through this low, then we're going to see, like I said, ultimately probably 65. We could be into 50 handle again if this thing breaks down, which it looks like it's trying to. We've got support on uh, 75, 76 right now on this on this chart, and you can see. Something else here, this uh, indicator down at the bottom is a 
uh, volume rate of change on a, a and this has already happened on a one minute. We get the volume, it takes that five to six minutes and then the volume starts to normalize again. Uh, but we still have the order books. It, this is kind of the last uh, last stand below this. We'll, we'll see more more go. Yeah, let's um, let's go over and take a take a look at uh, some of this. Let's go over to this page just to get a view of what's going on in the rest of the world. Three ninety nine on the ten year, definitely uh, starting to flatten out. This is sort of what I've been talking about. Ninety two, ninety two four ten is going to be the where the yields are going to stay. I talked about last night's uh, YouTube video, talked about the potential of a 375, which is absolutely insane to say that out loud. But there is some projections for that to possibly happen on the 10-year. Uh, so 10-year down... Now, this is interesting because the 30 actually upticked. It was 408, if you remember, 408 and a half earlier. Now it's at 4, where are we at here? Uh, 411, okay? And the 10 years at 4. So we were 404, 408. Now, now that, that 10, uh, 1030 spread is steepened back out a little bit. So everybody's trying to figure out what this means and a bunch of money moving around right now for sure. So here we are at 83. Let's go back over to the uh, level two. So we got a little bit of crossovers and a bounce here. This is what I was talking about here in this middle chart is the volatility starts to, to come in. And you already see these, I was drawing this in earlier. So we're gonna see further contraction of the five minute market grid. As like I said, it takes approximately between five and seven bars to really normalize. Once that happens, what the market grid's doing folks, so if you're, if you're new hanging around here, what the market grid is doing is actually showing you what the expectation for the bar is for the next for the next bar. So right now, what for this current bar that we're on, it's suggesting, let me bring this on screen just so you know what this means when I'm talking about it. It's suggesting that the ranges uh, for this is is going to be down here between a, a extreme of 38.51 on the upside, 38.42. Typically, it's S2, R2 is the primary range it'll print in right now. And the the, the low has been, uh, let's see if I can get to the right place here. The low has been, <clears throat> excuse me, 77.84. We go back to the grid here and you'll see that the 77, it was S1 exactly. So it went exactly to S1. 84 was R1, so it's been printing S1, R1 in this sequence so far. And like I said, once we get an update, and go back to over here to the Algos, once we get an update, we're going to get, um, where are we at here? We got two minutes, 36 seconds. We're going to see more of this contraction. You can also see the 10 period moving average is, is um, rising below this, this action here. So just telling you that we're going to see stability here, and but the augos are suggesting right now that that we're going to see the all of these moving averages are going to stay positive. So we're likely to stay around the value of the ten period moving average for the next hour or so. So I'm just looking at some comments here. That's good, Scooter.
Yeah, I'm, uh, Eric, I'm trying to figure out your comment there is, yeah, so this is the 10 minute uh, moving average, yeah, or 10 period moving average on a five minute chart. And like I said, we're, we're seeing some stability in here. Everything's starting to come in. Uh, the, the market grid's tightening up. It just takes a time after you get, this is basically the best way that I try to describe an, an event, what we just went through, is having this, you're on a, um, you're on a pond and there's a slight wind and it's just kind of got these small little waves and somebody throws a big rock in the middle of the pond and it throws this, all these shock waves throughout. And that's what that rally, that's what that spike in prices did. So it, you can see the shock wave and what the augos and everything are, are suggesting is that we're going, that, that wave and the impact of that price is going to change. And, and I also compare it a lot of times to like if you have a half pipe and momentum is a very interesting. That's the way the PPMs work is if you put the ball at the top of the half pipe and it's going to roll back and forth until it loses its momentum. But what happens then you get a rally, it resets the ball in the half pipe and the momentum burns off. And then it has, a, you know, that's the best way I, I found to describe exactly what goes on with momentum. So momentum got jacked up, now it's it's normalizing. And when it normalizes, then you then you can finally start to look at it and what's going to be the next next action that there's going to be. So when I, I threw a couple orders out there for fun uh, when we were trading in the 90s, there would have been good trades for 20 handles if I uh, there was no way to get filled. So I'd, I knew there was just it was just too crazy trying to get anything done. But the the point, um, like I said, uh, let's go back to trade station and look at the level two. So we're starting to normalize on a five. The one minute has completely normalized. You see, uh, let me just bring bring this up full screen for you. So you see, here's the big, this is the big bubble here where the, the shock wave hit and now it's normalized. All the, all the market grid, you see the big expansion. It's sort of like if you look at Bollinger Bands. Bollinger Bands are based on standard deviations. This is based on the actual deviation of the bars. It's, it's, a, it's more direct input than what Bollinger Bands are. And, and the bands are fine, you know, um, but these are different. The difference between them, and a lot of times, you know, I always saw you get this bubble a lot of times you get these weird formations that come out of Bollinger Bands and they're completely useless. Maybe somebody, I've never studied them that much. I know John, that, uh, John used to be on a board of a company I was associated with. And the, the point of the, uh, uh, of the patterns here is it's more direct volatility that's being looked at. So now we're completely normalized. Uh, the Wavetech webs are linear regressions. There's nothing proprietary about them other than the interpretation of them that I've been using these since 1991, I believe is the right number. I think it was 91 when I, uh, when I first did uh, started using these uh, particular uh, formations and things to trade off of. Yeah, so, um, yeah, anyway, uh, let's, um, let's go back over here. It's uh, about two minutes out to J. Powell time. So uh, we'll come back on. We'll listen, we'll listen to exactly um, uh, what's going on. Here we are back at 92. I got, I want to squeeze this down so we can see, yeah, look at this. Here we are again. So we did get an, an update. You can see now in the middle chart here, we're seeing that con, that consolidation. Right now we're trading R2 on the five minute. Bring that up real quick. R2 is uh, 93.75. So we're trading right there at the moment. This upward slope in this, in this pattern is is still bullish, 
And I know that, you know, um, last night's video, I was talking about the daily algos are suggesting there's still a bias to the upside. And if I, I'll show you some other charts here in a minute, but everything's still, st still basically bullish. Um, I haven't looked at this and what all the, all the excitement. Let's flap over to this page real quick. Yeah, look at NASDAQ up 0.85 now. So complete reversal. Russell up 0.4. It's lagging a little bit, but all these others have been lagging. So we're up 0.8 at the moment. So Jay Paul and the boys are already happy about what's going on here, folks. Let's uh, light this up. Hang on. Yeah, I'm just... Just watching the screen. As soon as uh, Paul comes up, uh, I will turn this on. We'll listen to his opening statement. We'll watch the market trade as we do. Could you folks just confirm you're hearing this? Before we get to that, to that point of 2% inflation. Yeah. That's right. And look, we know what's going on with housing. We know they've described their campaign as front-loading the tightening process. And if they're front-loading it, then getting to 4% in seven months or eight months seems like that's a pretty good job of front Okay, so that's good. I, I have to turn my mic off so you guys can hear that. All good. Um, Yeah, uh, Fred, I see this conversation. You just have to, you have to, rem this is a trading view issue. You have to take off the old indicators and then just re-put the indicators on and you'll have the update. And I am doing a video uh, before the end of the week on the new, how to use the algos. No, it's coming. It, it it should have been done yesterday. It will be done. Yeah, exactly. Thanks, Jim. All right. We're almost there. There we go. Good afternoon. My colleagues and I are strongly committed to bringing inflation back down to our 2% goal. We have both the tools that we need and the resolve it will take to restore price stability on behalf of American families and businesses. Price stability is the responsibility of the Federal Reserve and serves as the bedrock of our economy. Without price stability, the economy does not work for anyone. In particular, without price stability, we will not achieve a sustained period of strong labor market conditions that benefit all. Today, the FOMC raised our policy interest rate by 75 basis points, and we continue to anticipate that ongoing increases will be appropriate. We are moving our policy stance purposefully to a level that will be sufficiently restrictive to return inflation to 2%. In addition, we're continuing the process of significantly reducing the size of our balance sheet. Restoring price stability will likely require maintaining a restrictive stance of policy for some time. I will have more to say about today's monetary policy actions after briefly reviewing economic developments. <clears throat> the U.S. economy has slowed significantly from last year's rapid pace. Real GDP rose at a pace of 2.6% last quarter, but is unchanged so far this year. Recent indicators point to modest growth of spending and production this quarter. Growth in consumer spending has slowed from last year's rapid pace, in part reflecting lower real disposable income and tighter financial conditions. Activity in the housing sector has weakened significantly, largely reflecting higher mortgage rates. Higher interest rates and slower output growth also appear to be weighing on business fixed investment. Despite the slowdown in growth, the labor market remains extremely tight, with the unemployment rate at a 50-year low, job vacancies still very high, and wage growth elevated. Job gains have been robust, with employment rising by an average of 289,000 jobs per month over August and September. Although job vacancies have moved below their highs, and the pace of job gains has slowed from earlier in the year, the labor market continues to be out of balance. 
with demand substantially exceeding the supply of available workers. The labor force participation rate is little changed since the beginning of the year. Inflation remains well above our longer run goal of 2%. Over the 12 months ending in September, total PCE prices rose 6.2%, excluding the volatile food and energy categories. Core PCE prices rose 5.1%. And the recent inflation data again have come in higher than expected. Price pressures remain evident across a broad range of goods and services. Russia's war against Ukraine has boosted prices for energy and food and has created additional upward pressure on inflation. Despite elevated inflation, longer term inflation expectations appear to remain well anchored, as reflected in a broad range of surveys of households, businesses, and forecasters, as well as measures from financial markets. But that is not grounds for complacency. The longer the current bout of high inflation continues, the greater the chance that expectations of higher inflation will become entrenched. <clears throat> The Fed's monetary policy actions are guided by our mandate to promote maximum employment and stable prices for the American people. My colleagues and I are acutely aware that high inflation imposes significant hardship as it erodes purchasing power, especially for those least able to meet the higher costs of essentials like food, housing, and transportation. We are highly attentive to the risks that high inflation poses to both sides of our mandate and we're strongly committed to returning inflation to our 2% objective. At today's meeting, the committee raised the target range for the federal funds rate by 75 basis points. And we are continuing the process of significantly reducing the size of our balance sheet, which plays an important role in firming the stance of monetary policy. With today's action, we've raised interest rates by three and three quarters percentage points this year, we anticipate that ongoing increases in the target range for the federal funds rate will be appropriate in order to attain a stance of monetary policy that is sufficiently restrictive to return inflation to 2% over time. Financial conditions have tightened significantly in response to our policy actions, and we are seeing the effects on demand in the most interest rate sensitive sectors of the economy, such as housing. It will take time, however, for the full effects of monetary restraint to be realized, especially on inflation. That's why we say in our statement that in determining the pace of future increases in the target range, we will take into account the cumulative tightening of monetary policy and the lags with which monetary policy affects e economic activity and inflation. At some point, as I've said in the last two press conferences, uh, it will become appropriate to slow the pace of increases as we approach the level of interest rates that will be sufficiently restrictive to bring inflation down to our 2% goal. There is significant uncertainty around that level of interest rates. Even so, we still have some ways to go, and incoming data since our last meeting suggests that the ultimate level of interest rates will be higher than previously expected. There we go, they're selling them now. Our decisions right. will depend on the totality of incoming data and their implications for the outlook for economic activity and inflation. We will continue to make our decisions meeting by meeting and communicate our thinking as clearly as possible. We're taking forceful steps to moderate demand so that it comes into better alignment with supply. Our overarching focus is using our tools to bring inflation back down to our 2% goal and to keep longer term inflation expectations well anchored. Reducing inflation is likely, likely to require a sustained period of below trend growth and some softening of labor market conditions. All right, I've heard enough. I don't know about you folks. That's enough for me. Uh, they just popped this market big time. Uh, here's trading down into that 60 handle I was talking about just a little bit ago. And I, I'm showing you something, folks, here um, that, that I showed you earlier. The Augos were predicting that that three to four bars out, we were going to see a rollover. We just, we just got it. And we traded all the way down through all of the moving averages, crushed everything. That uh, This is part of that bubble. Now we're back into the range. This is what I was, I was talking to you about earlier. Is that we're probably going to end up right back where we started. So these reactions, you can. Let me just draw in uh, something here. This is exactly uh, what I was referencing almost an hour ago. When you get this spike up, now we're right back in. I, I'm putting a cursor here across the top. That is 
56. We went right to that range. Last trade right now, we're looking at um, looking at 51.52, and it looks like a complete reversal. Now this is a, a five minute chart. Okay, let's let's go over and. This is the daily chart, and daily sitting here right on, pretty much on the 10-day moving average. We're 38.29. We still have PPM1 at a, a plus 0.38. So this is suggesting there is some support here. We're also looking at the, uh, the numbers. S2 is right now 21. Somebody pointed out earlier that we were trading S1 is 86 daily, and we traded almost to, I said S1, SR1, R2 was at uh, 39.10, and we got, we printed 07. So we basically have, uh, did an, an R2, and now we're, we're trying, we're trading S1. Maybe we're going to reprint and see if we can retest the lows here, depending on what's going on. So uh, just looking at a couple comments here. Yeah, so let's go back to the five-minute algos here. And it's projecting this is just, it's going to get, uh, continuing to get worse to the point. Right now, the projections over the next couple bars, you can see this, what's being, what's going on with these algos right now, this is, this is the no, noise. If you look at this, this is what I call the echo formation. So you're seeing, let, let me draw this in. This is actually really cool. I get to show you guys. No one will ever see this two hours into the video, but I'll show you anyway. I guess no one will ever uh, see it again other than the 800 of you that are hanging out the mo at the moment. But let me show you something. That I think this is, so if you look at this right here, this is the big, bubble, this is all the volatility. This reflects on the PPMs. This is reflecting that increase. And then what we're seeing now, especially on the one minute, and I'm just going to do this in a different color, just so we can see that what's happening on the uh, PPM one, this is an almost a perfect inversion of what happened to the upside. So it's or you can see that the, the matrix, I'm going to call it a matrix, is telling us that we're going to get um, an echo on here. So let's just, let me just draw that in real quick so you can see what I'm talking about. What it's saying is we got this. That's what this indicator showed us. Now this is saying that we're going to get something like this. Okay, so we come right back into that range. And one of the things I know, there's, I see a bunch of you that are in the, uh, that I know from the live room, normally we would be there. Thank you for uh, coming here. But this is part of what's happening here with the, with this, with the augos are, this is the echo. So it's a shadow echo. We'll see what, what happens. And this is a five minute chart, so we'll have time to watch this. But these are, these are the patterns that you get. So now, you can start to build some ex expectations. One of the things that I talk about, if you're an intraday trader, what you have to be able to do is you have to see what hasn't happened, not what has happened. And, you know, uh, the whole concept, uh, I mean, I'm the most anti-trend line guy you've ever met. Trend lines are worthless to me. Maybe you use them and they work, you drew a trend line. But for every time it breaks one, it's a failure. And so the reason why I went to moving averages and then, and studying the internals of the moving averages. Otherwise, they're, they're, they're change on a percentage basis, first, second derivative, and start to figure out what the probability map was when moving averages are going to make a, a be a trend line and when they're going to fail. Everybody uses moving averages, but no one asks the right questions about moving averages. They go, oh, there's a it's trading just above the 200-day moving average or it's trading just above whatever average. 
What they don't know is what the probabilities are that these things are going to stay above there. Uh, my entire career has been based on that ide ideology that we came up with in 1984 and 86, because everybody used moving averages. They use them now, they use them then, you know. And what we wanted to know is when, why does sometimes it bounce off of, how come it goes through it? And we, we spent a lot of time, and that out of that came these PPMs and understanding these. And now with the Augos, we have a little, little more insight uh, to those. So let me take up, I did not mean to do that. We'll, we'll try this again. I wanted to click on this and this. So now, see, the algos are, are the echo is saying that we're going to get like a, a zigzag formation down here. And we've already bounced off of here and we went right off of the 40 period moving average. And interesting enough, 40 period moving average was still in trend mode and that was the value. We traded just below it for a few seconds. But now we went. <laughs> We're, we're trying to get to a stabilization mode. And in a day like this, folks, I'm just going to keep going down this trail a little bit so you understand, especially if you're a day trader, you, you need to hear this, is when you get into this, we just went from one spike in volatility to another. So now we have so much noise in the markets uh, that it, it makes it harder to, to determine. So what the augos are suggesting, well, we can watch this and you hang out for a little while, what they're suggesting is we're going to get potentially some kind of zigzag formation. And what I, I'm going to draw one more thing in because I try to, this is stuff that we talk about in the, in the trading room a lot because we're seeing the markets trying to come down. What's likely to happen is we're going to get some kind of formation here that does something like this and we could just get a consolidation that flat lines here. Uh, we should be able to see, this is a five minute graph, okay? But we should be able to see out of this noise whether, and uh, what we're having is we had the big up, now we got the down, we're getting what I call the echo uh, formation. And then out of this echo formation, maybe it actually says out of this, we get, we go back up and by the end of the session, we're printing toward the highs. Now the day, so we can carry the, I'm not going to do it right now, but we can carry these thoughts further by taking and going from, this is a five minute chart to going into, typically I just go to the hourly chart to see if there's in, any patterns there that are, are important, or we go to the daily market grid to figure out what's going on. And I, as I was talking to you a few minutes ago, we actually already had the, um, we already printed almost an R2 and an S1. Maybe maybe we we end up taking this thing and it goes, I'm going to draw an, another arrow, make it a, a different color, but maybe, maybe we get a move down and we make a new low in the session. Uh, everything that I've been seeing is on balance, we're stable to up for an, a number of more days here before we start to see any potential of the downside yet. Um, I'll bring in uh, the WaveTech database as well. <clears throat> and really what we're, we're seeing there, we're at 46% bullish on a short-term basis. Typically, we can roll back pretty quick, but typically when we get over that 42%, it's a more of a sustained rally and there's more to it. And I've been talking about ultimately, we get towards a 200-day moving average on the S&P as most likely where we're going to head. Do we go above that? I can't tell you at the moment. Uh, I, but I do see that generally this is the, the patterns that are, that are setting up here. So we're starting to come down. This was the projection here that the, you see the algo is projecting it. We're going to come back in. We have uh, this, you can see this range up here let me get you some values on that range. Right now, RXT 3912, STX is 3826. This is the volatility being projected on a five minute uh, on a five minute graph. I need to make sure I was on the five minute. So uh, we just got an update. The algo's kind of adjusted just a little bit, not not quite as bearish, 
but they're still suggesting that we're going to trade down maybe to uh, toward this R3 level, which is uh, potentially in the 30 handle. So we'll, we'll see what happens. We're starting to print down a little bit. We're at 50, what, 58, 57. The, the low of the previous five minute was 51. Uh, we also have the 40 period moving average, which is now about to cross its first and second derivative. So there's a lot of downside coming in. Yeah, just see. Um, yeah, listen, uh, I, I told you my script for the Fed when, before we got into this this part of the of the live cast today is that everybody could have I, I doubt that there isn't anyone that's watching right now that couldn't couldn't have written the script of what the Fed was going to say. I'm convinced that they're going to continue to say they're going to raise rates. They said they they want to see inflation actually going down. I think they got a real problem with this because um, I, as I my little rant I went on before the Fed is I just don't see that there's a lot of things that are getting embedded in the economy. They're not going away. The wages that he mentioned, uh, I made some notes when he was talking. Uh, he used in the first, I think, three or four sentences, he used price stability three times at least. And, you know, our job at price stability, price stability, they're telling you they're going to keep hammering it. And people keep arguing with me that, in, in a way that I keep saying that the other central banks are the players that are trying to change sentiment. Otherwise, the BOE, Bank of England, Bank of Canada, the uh, Bank of Japan, the ECB, all of these characters, these other players are the ones that are using the words and some of the actions to get market sentiment to change. That's how we got from 3502 to this uh, 38 handle. Look at, look at what's happening on the chart here, folks. Exactly what was predicted is happening. So that uh, here all of a sudden, we're trading 30 handle. This is exactly what, what, what was uh, to happen. So now this will be interesting because this is, like I said, it's, it's an inversion of the pattern all of a sudden the volatility is inverting. And what could happen here, and this stuff is dynamic. So even though what, right now I have the Algo set, you can set them out to 200. I don't know why you would, but typically I set them to 10, just so I can see the potential of the pattern. So what's happening is there's, it's taking the previous periods and running something called auto regression. It's a booth methodology of auto regression. You can look it up and Google it and how prices are being predicted. So a lot of people will use this type of methodology on the market itself, and it's very inaccurate, really. It, sometimes it's right, sometimes it's wrong. But when, by applying it to these indicators, all we're doing is telling us, giving us more insight of the magnitude of, of a moving average, which tells us about probabilities and uh, all that. Look at this. Here we are, 19. That's that's S two folks, uh, daily, so they're they're just pressing them down. So this this is uh, so here's what's happening. Let's keep. Remember the pattern has changed. If you recall, it was almost a zigzag pattern that was being forecasted. Now what it's saying, a couple things have happened, folks. If you come into Bob's world. <laughs> and understand the markets through the lens that I see them. And I tried it for over two years now. I've been on on, live, uh, on YouTube. I've gone into a lot of detail. I've got hundreds and hundreds of videos. Every, every, every day, every market day, except for the days, uh, I did go to Europe this summer, and I take the last two weeks of the year. But other than that, I'm live every day. And I'm, like I said, I'm looking forward to the, the new show that's going to start next week, 9.15 Eastern, pre-market expectations. This is stuff we're going to be talking about. What are the algos telling us about the next couple hours, how things are setting up, what the overnight 
action looks like, all of that stuff, setting that up every day in, in a real-time mode. So it, it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, there's going to be other segments and things that I do uh, that I think you, you folks will find interesting. Look at this thing, man. It is 12 sprinting. 812 just printed. So we are all the way down on this chart that I'm on right now, down to ST, STX is 3809.15. And we got to 0850. So we printed STX. We're getting a little bounce, but there's there's no, no real bounce here. Let's go over and let's go to one minute because that. Yeah, so okay, check this out. So we go to a lower increment when you get into this. We just got, let me change the scale. We just got on this bar here, this bar that we printed down, a couple of things happened. I've got the the augos here. So we have price projection tools too. So back when the market was over here, when it was at 62, the price projections one and two we're suggesting that we're going to 23, uh, potentially down to 37.98 was the two. We got a STX buy four right here in this pattern. This is what we call bubble pattern on the market grid. And look at what the algos on the one is telling us. The algo on the one is is basically telling us we're going to test the 10. I'm not going to go into details of what that means, but because the algo is projecting for it to lose momentum uh, and it goes through, if it does go first and second derivative, then it tells us there's about a 60% a, a probability that will rise above this moving average. So what it's telling us right now that we're going to test the moving average, but you have to remember the moving average is actually declining substantially. In fact, it's declining at uh, PPM1 is a massive 1.4 down. This is only a 10% probability for the market to rally above that 10 period moving average right now, which is at 38.31, it just updated. So it's coming down pretty hard here, but what this algo is telling us is that it's gonna flatten out. We got a bubble bottom here. We almost printed the Fib target two. We got a four STX buys in this pattern. Typically we're gonna stabilize. Maybe we run up and bounce off of the the 20, 21 period moving average, which is right now at 49, but dropping about five handles per minute. This is a one minute chart we've migrated to. So this is, uh, this type of analysis, especially intraday, can, uh, this whole, everything I'm talking about here can be applied to a daily, weekly, monthly chart. It all all is across the board, but we're watching this thing go. I'm gonna go back to that five minute because the the algo was telling us that we should start to bottom in here and start to move up back in toward these moving averages. Everything looks like they're still down, but they're going to stabilize here. So we'll see what kind of market uh, formation going. So yeah, I just want to get into uh, some of that stuff. You know, um, so that you understand how you know the the analysis and how this is is going to work because the the patterns are definitely look like we're going to stabilize try to move back towards the 40 back towards the 30 somewhere between right now we're trading last trade right now is 18 we'll probably go back to 30 35 and uh, we just have to watch this pattern and probably the best place to watch this pattern is not here on the five, but here on the one minute. One minute's continue to working working this. It's telling us we're gonna we're gonna break over the ten. We're trading right now. I'd probably be be looking to buy somewhere in here, uh, just for a rally. The other thing that just popped up here on the one minute. Uh, I'm gonna draw this in so folks can see this. This is significant, and you'll see these green dots. I'm putting arrows here. Those are Fibonacci targets. So the pattern, what we're getting here is it's projecting a pattern like this. So we have a pattern finder, we have the Fib projection tool. So it automatically real time sees these patterns and we'll start to project out. 
We got the algo just updated. We got algos telling us that at least on the on the short term that we're going to uh, continue. We're already above the ten. I told you what three minutes ago it was telling us we're going to go above the ten. So we're already above that. That's twenty five. Last trade twenty seven fifty, and we're probably heading back toward this. I know I got a lot of junk on the screen here. We're probably heading back towards the 21, which is right now 45, but like I said, dropping uh, about three to five handles every, so that's gonna be around 38 to 40 is where the range is. Let me clean this up here. Yeah, so you can see the dots printing up here now. You can see, uh, the algo is still suggesting we just got an update. It kind of moderated a little bit, but we're now above the 10. And, and this crossover here on the second derivatives told us that that's what's going to happen. It's projecting that we're going, this, what it's projecting is, let me just see here. Yeah, it's projecting that not only are we going to stay above the 10, but the 10 average is going to have, is going to start to move higher. The only way you can do that is you have to, you have to trade at or above that moving average. You have to maintain that. So right now we're trading uh, 22. The average right now is 20.25. So, uh, and we're 45 seconds. We just got an update. So we'll continue to, to watch that and just see how that goes. Let's look into some of your comments. Uh, I see a, a question a little ways back. How do how do these auto regression uh, fare against longer term time frames? I actually do real so really well because what we can uh, do with uh, trading view is it's kind of nice because you can go back and run the script to see what it was predicting based on the prices before and it does a really good job so it's always better in real time mode walking forward so still on a daily chart it takes a lot of days these things have been around for about 12 weeks now and uh, and i've been using them every day Yeah, just looking at some comments here. Yeah, so um, algos are peaking out already, and. If you recall what I was talking about, I was looking at some comments there. Uh, the There it is. The 10 period moving average is now rising. It's rising at 0.23. It's almost at trend mode. We should have some support along that line. That's 23. Last trade is uh, 30. So we're trading above it. Uh, the thing we're going to have to watch here, which the... 21 period moving average is just above the market grid. That's the red line here. We just got an update. This is a one minute. So we're we're seeing it trying to moderate. What it's saying is sometime in the next three bars plus, we're likely to get above there. Then PPM3 is going to come in play. We still have these FIB targets above. And they're right now, I mentioned them earlier, 57, 75, 86. So all of a sudden, we're being projected to go back to the upside. And you know, I'm pretty, at the moment, it looks like this 
let's uh, I'm going to go over to the hourly chart here. Let me go to hourly. Change the scale just a little bit. So we were looking at this earlier. Look how crazy this bar is here. Is that we're really looking at the massive expansion. So it's going to take probably about five to eight trading hours before this will start to normalize. The algos are saying that the PPM1 is going to stay very negative. That's because the 10 pair moving average is going to continue to decline and that will supply a substantial amount of downside. It does not mean, and it looks like that we're not going to necessarily get out much of that uh, pattern. If you go to the Wavetech uh, Fibonacci projection tool, it was projecting here for a move down to 3809. And that was projected back when the market was trading in the 60 handle where my cursor is right now. That first projection came out here and that spike that went right to that number in that hour. We went right to uh, 850. The projection was 0925. So spot on. But what's going, the same phenomena happens on every one of these charts. You have to normalize them as you go, up. as the market starts to update, the market grid will contract. Uh, PPMs are suggesting that they're going to maintain their downward uh, flow, and it's going to be somewhere around five or six hours before we, we start to see any type of formation that's likely to be positive, even have a chance at it. So we're going to be in two, two things are likely to happen. From an hourly viewpoint, we're going to have a consolidation for the next several hours. We'll probably stay below the 200, which is right now 47 at 3847. And we probably trade within this range. I'm looking at S, R, R1, 34, R2, 46. So that lines up perfect with some of these other elements that are in this pattern. Let's go back to some of these shorter term elements. Um, I know you guys aren't commenting. It doesn't look like uh, Paul's saying much of anything. Did he stop talking? Is that why the market stabilized? Probably so, right? Now it looks like he's he's still talking. How many times did he say tools? I wonder. Somebody's asking, are we going to close down or up on the day? I would say just looking at some of the things that we looked at, we're just going to probably stay uh, stable from, from this standpoint right now. Um, my guess is we're going to probably be down, but we'll probably stay above the 10 period moving average. I'm just rescaling this. Yeah. We'll probably end up above the 10. It's 26 right now, last trade 30. So that's going to be your support. And like I said, the uh, this is a daily chart here on the S&P, and the algos are suggesting that uh, we're going to uh, just flatten out. So there is a potential in this pattern to trade down for another day or two and print down in towards maybe the 21, 30, 
3747. I think I mentioned a number last night on YouTube on that as well, but those are those are the numbers you, you would look for. Yeah, he's he looks like he's still going strong, huh? He's waving his aunt, hands. I'm, I've got a video on him. Yeah, so a uh, question. I'll, I'll do a couple questions here. Someone's asking, why is PPM2 in a different direction from PPM1? Um, on what length of chart? Was that on the previous, like on a five-minute? It's basically, yeah, so the one minute is coming down. I'll, I'll try to explain this. Uh, the PPM 1, 2, and 3, they track uh, what's going on internally with the moving averages. So they're different lengths. So the short-term average is rolling over, flattening out, because if you look back and you go 10 days back or more, you you can see that we're starting to stabilize and, and, a, and a 10 average, a simple average, is just going to flatten out to 21 it's still got more more potential upside or the moving average is going to start to gain more. And the whole theory that I operate under is that these there's basically three primary trends within a trend. So I'm going to go over to answering this question. It'll I believe it'll be valuable. Uh, so we go over here to the ES on the 1024, we got a buy signal from our models at 3771. And what's going to happen here on, on this chart is really we're, we're getting these little stair steps up. I've been talking about potentially getting up to the uh, 200 average right now is uh, 40. Looks like, let me just get the exact value here. Uh, 41.15, and in the uh, live room the other day, we were actually able to find a complete cluster of numbers between 39.90 and around 40.20 should be pretty stiff resistance. Now, this number may change as we go on, but there's definitely some things to the upside there. Thanks for educating there, Jim Wilbury. Appreciate it. Uh, thanks, Craig Wood. I actually saw a few uh, number of orders coming in. I appreciate everybody that just purchased the indicators. Uh, it will probably, um, there's a process that goes through, so uh, you'll, you'll see them in your invite-only scripts. In fact, uh, go over to the Augos here. Uh, when you go to indicators, they will show up here in invite-onlys right here. It, it may, it shouldn't take long to, to get them up. Um, Yeah, so Yeah, so I look forward to seeing you in the live room. Uh the no, uh somebody's talking uh is the actual members live room delayed? No, it is real time. Uh YouTube, you can't control this, so you guys are behind the action here for sure. Thanks, Brandon Donahue.
So um, this is Trade Station. Um, getting some uh, interesting questions here. Um, Yeah, Gail, you're welcome. Yeah, I try to do, you know, when we do these, uh, the folks in the live room are were uh, agreeable enough to to let me come in here and and do um, do this room because of the Fed today. So I wanted to make sure we get some elements of education, things and things like that. But it is nice being in the other room. It, a, it's private and it's real time, so there's no lag. So that that's um, that's the uh, the nice thing about that room. So somebody um, was was asking here, and let me reduce a couple of things. So I I put up one of the things that I want you to see, and I bring this up, but this is. Uh, this is a software that that we developed, and that and I was I'm the architect. I'm not the programmer, but this is a, a portfolio management software, and so we can um, literally build. Uh, we do things like ETF hacks and things like that. We can go. This is uh, we took XLE broke down the individual stocks and we can manage multiple stocks, tell you when to buy and sell them, how much to buy and sell, the exact amounts. So it basically takes anyone, turns them into a portfolio manager. And so this is a platform that I built has, uh, if you go into in individual stocks and uh, bring up uh, different elements here, you, you can actually come in here and you, you can see all, all the different, uh, any buy, sell signals, weekly, daily, all that stuff. But you can actually build all this stuff into a portfolio management system. It's very powerful, especially if you have 401k or something like that. And if you are interested, uh, uh, you'll be finding out more about this because one of the things I'm going to be doing on, on the... Um, on the next week's show is there will be one of the days of the week we're going to be talking about ETF hacks. And one of the things that folks talk about a lot, you hear a term or you see a term around the street called direct uh, indexing. Uh, direct indexing is kind of a joke in real well. It, all they're trying to do is get the internal cost of the ETFs. So what we do is something even next level. It's uh, dynamic direct indexing. And that's the, uh, the, that is where we're where we're dynamically following the trends within all of the the indexes and and all that. So, for instance, over the um, since the last twenty years, we put every stock in the S and P five hundred. We maintain that list and trade all the stocks, all five hundred of them, and allocate them out through our allocation process. And we're just short of tripling what the S&P did over the last 22 years. So we're like 2.8 or something like that. And, um, you know, I've, I've shown uh, um, a, a lot of that, that stuff around. Let me, um, let me show you something. I'm just going to segue here while the markets are consolidating a, a bit here. And... That is not the one I wanted to put up for you. Let me just see something here. Just trying to find a, a, a graphic that I did that I think would be helpful for you to understand. Well, there, there's WaveTech. If you want to get there, that's how you get to WaveTech, which is the lower end product, does most of the same thing as the uh, portfolio expert does, but that, that's it there. I'll try uh, one more thing here.
just trying to, I'm trying to find something I'll show you folks since we're on this conversation. Yeah, let's go, let's take a look. Market's back at 1820 again. Y'all yeah, goes on, uh, let's, let's go over to the, this is the hourly, let's go back and crank up the five minute. Let's get back to the markets here, folks. Yeah, so we are, this is interesting. Uh, the, the configuration changed, but we are starting to get that uh, zigzag formation that I was talking about earlier. I'm just trying to bring something up, folks. I get something in, in the way here. I got to move. Yeah, so we're starting to get a little bit of that structure I was talking about. I'm just bringing up a tool to draw here, and just so you can you can see that, all right? If you recall, you're watching, uh, this indicator was kind of suggesting like this, this pattern here, it's still suggesting. So what we got uh, when we were talking about this, the we were on this green bar here when this was being projected. Now we're seeing it. And so what we got down, up, down, and it's saying up again. And this is what I was talking about before is we're really in this channel and uh, whether whether we go part way up here and we break out or we reverse and, and the, the bottom falls apart, uh, we'll, we'll find that out shortly. But yeah, so this is, Yago is actually saying we're going to see uh, the potential of rallying back and testing the 10 again. If you remember that, this is the five minute. We got a signal that that was likely to happen. We went up and tested the 10. This is actually ultimately suggesting that we're going to not only test, let's see what this value is. Yeah, we're still going to stay negative. So the 10 is the white line that's embedded here. Let me expand it so you can see it a little better. And it's right here, the white line. So that's coming down really hard. That's going to be your resistance. And as we come into the market grid, you're probably looking at 28.30 is going to be major resistance. And we, we what did we print down to, folks, here? Let's see this. I'm pretty sure this was a new low. Yeah, we're looking at 05.50. Originally, we had an 09 level there as far as that goes. So... Yeah, Jim Baker, I, I'm definitely, I will try to call you uh, this afternoon. Absolutely. So I'm just looking at, um, yeah, it's really nice. We've had no um, of the nasty bots that have hit the channel once in a while. Yeah, so we're, uh, we'll see what happens here. What do we got here? Five minute. Let me change the scaling a little bit. So that 10 is coming down. Uh, we're getting at what time? We only have a half hour to go. We've had that much fun. That's amazing. I'm just looking at comments here, folks. It's, that's probably true. That's one of the problems with doing the 
night broadcast that those those uh, nasty bots show up then. Uh, uh, Robert, Earp, uh, make sure uh, info at Kendall Report is where you want to send that. Yeah, I'll, I'll watch uh, what I can handle on the Powell re rewatch here. Okay, yeah, let's, uh, so we're still pressing them here. 3801, 3850 prints. Let's go to the one. I want to see what this is, how this is setting up. Yeah, one minute. Um, got a couple of interesting things. We got uh, fib targets three, uh, three fib targets down below, and they're looking at 3770. 39, 39, 20. Is that the right numbers? Yep. 30, 37, 70 is being out there. This is off a one minute chart. But what the algos are suggesting, at least for the, for the 10, let me change the scale. Uh, just change this uh, scale, but the 10 right now is 08, 50. And it says it's going to flatten out. We probably could rally back to uh, 1822 if we hold right here. That's a big if. If we get through here, there's actually some uh, downward targets. Going over to the five minute here real quick. So five minutes. Uh, so this is the way this thing should be configured, by the way. And somebody was asking, why does the one look different than the uh, PPM2? And so I am going to do my best to attempt to show you and talk about that just for a minute while we're watching in, into the close. We're getting to the point now where recovering is almost unlikely, right? Um, as it just gets into a short covering rally. I, I actually don't know the last time I've seen Paul talk that long and just go home already right looks like he's finally stopped but wow So make sure I haven't said it. I hope uh, all of you folks are hitting that like button. I, my, my goal is to really build this channel up. So here we go. Uh, 87. So they're, they're just selling them into the close here right now. Starting to get it. Starting to get a little, little ugly. You got what? A uh, half hour to go. And what these algos are saying is that uh, if you look at, there's a number on the far right. If you look at, look over there, you'll see minus 1.4. That's where my cursor is. This downtrend on this PPM1 is just seriously, that's heavy duty uh, resistance. So it's saying that we're going to stay weak right in, looks like right toward the close. We're trading STX on the one as we speak right now. Yeah, all of the algos are very negative here. This is the five minute. Let's take a look at the one real quick, see if there's any possibilities whatsoever. Yeah, they're just saying that this 10 period is going to remain very negative and the downtrend is going to continue like i said this is crazy because i was just looking at these uh 
fib targets on the tools, and they were saying uh, 3770. We printed down to 81 so far. So the uh, fib target one is 70 here on a one minute. We're we're actually right about 30 30 to go here right now. Yeah, um, let's have fun. Uh, I'll answer your question. It said, um, it, as, as far as, um, I don't think I said they won't break new lows. I just think we're in a cycle right now. There's going to be recovery. So I think most of that stuff is down the road. When I start to unpack some of the quarterly expectations and some of these longer term, I, I went through some. The other day, there's still, uh, just for the record, uh, the secular bull market's still on. We're not in a bear market. We're in a short-term bear market. But when you start looking at quarterly charts, all of all the moving averages, all the trends are massively still up. They're at the point of reflection that we're going to get an answer probably in the next uh, quarter or two, maybe by the second quarter of next year. Uh, we're going to have some some real hell to pay. And I think the markets will roll over there. Don't think we see a new high. I don't see that in the cards at all. But um, we're going to see how it goes. Like I said, a lot of what drives me is off of our database, off of our software. And right now we're 46% bullish on the, on the daily. I wouldn't be surprised after... Uh, a day like this looks like we're going to finish in pretty negative mode here is that uh, we're, we're taking out, if, you know, if I went back and we will go back, uh, go back to the the daily chart here is daily augles are still suggesting more downside. We're already trading down towards some of these moving averages that I talked about, 37.45 I mentioned earlier. If, if there is a risk if we don't hold that level that this whole thing definitely rolls over. It's going to be interesting because the 3787 level, a close under that level, a close under that level today is probably going to kick that trade that I was showing you on Trade Station that we put on at uh, 77. That could actually blow, we could end up getting blown out of that that long trade that's been in the S&P. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. So this trade here, we went long on the 24th, 37.71 even. And I'm saying if we close, yeah, really on this one, we'd have to close under 37.45 to actually trigger, to probably trigger this thing out. So we're, we're really, uh, you can see here, uh, the PPMs, we're just looking at all goes, they're all the, even the AR is expecting that we're going to see uh, more flattening here, which is maybe this trend fails again. Last time we got right to the 200, I called that one pretty, pretty well back in the June lows. And we went right to that 43 handle. And now we've, we've got another issue coming here, and I've talked about this a lot, is that we have the weekly averages that are still down a lot. Let me flip this over to a weekly just so you can see that. So right now, the, the weekly averages, uh, PPM 1 is minus 0.77, and all of, uh, all of the PPMs here on a weekly are all negative suggesting that um, we're not going to be able to rally much above, possibly above this 21 week, 21 week moving average, which is 39.10, which we've already bounced off again. So this big downtrend is, has been relenting and it's not allowing some of these numbers that get projected. I, I remember when we were trading 43, there were some probabilities for a 45 handle print never got there. It printed 03 and that was it. 
and it, it may be that we're getting a similar type pattern here. Yeah, Evan, uh, no, they aren't. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Yeah, the, the algos are still predicting everything's going down. That's why I was trying to tell you all the moving averages are down. So we're looking at right now at 86 handle. Let's go back over and take a look at some of this stuff. Always like somebody shows up for five minutes and think they know what they're talking about. It's pretty funny. Yeah, so the um, this is the daily, daily still projecting that these levels are going to become somewhat vulnerable, but we may just get into a retracement. So I'll be covering that as we go through the rest of the week. So we have a YouTube video tonight and the finale, uh, grand finale on Thursday night. And I think the plan is for me to start to reveal some of the potential trade that I was talking about earlier. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, if you're talking about if you get wave tech or um, or portfolio expert, yeah, just all you gotta do is make a request. We'll get you in. <laughs> I could actually, if uh, if I ever release the real Bob Kendall, Evan. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to, um, it's interesting, uh, Martin Clark, you just brought up something. Um, if you're, uh, there's a, a video on my channel and it was meant uh, specifically for advisors and it's not, um, it's not 60, 40 is dead. Uh, I could show you an article way back when many, many years ago that that strategy has been dead for a very long time. And, um, but the, uh, what I said was, uh, there's a video on my channel is why advisors should never do a 60-40 strategy. And if you have an advisor does 60-40 strategy, fire him. Uh, I saw a bunch of these people that are these passive investors and just, I mean, it's classic because that's why, it must be why we're underwater today is I ran across a, a, a couple segments, I think one on Bloomberg, uh, uh, an advisor, well, we're, we're putting back on our passive environments. What do you mean put, putting them back on? You never got out of them. <laughs> they should start to work now, that kind of stuff. So anyway, it's pretty funny. So we have a low of 78. Let's go back over to these uh, short-term stuff. So look at this. Uh, algorithms were suggesting we're going to get an upward uh, slant here. Let me change this. We came right down. We now have FIB targets for 38.20, 38, 38.38. 38. Algos already... We're suggesting we test the 21. We did that. This is on the one minute chart. So we did get a little bounce. Let's take a look at the five. Just see if there's any anything there at all. Yeah, the five's getting a little reversal. They're actually suggesting that we're going to see some upside, saying that we should test the 10, which is 38.12. I don't know if we have, what time is it? We've got 20 minutes to go. 
So we have four more updates from that standpoint. Yeah, the, the VIX has really been trading weird, uh, Steve Wilson. I've noticed that as well. Just, you know, it's not, it's not the, um, it's not a really good indicator directional movement day to day. It really is what it's predicting is why it's dropping is uh, volatility, not so much direction of movement, although you can derive some direction of movement off of them. I've, I've been saying for, I don't know, a couple of years, um, buy 31, sell 20s, you know, sell the 20, low 20s, you know, 31, 32. I think we got to 34 on the VIX, and that was pretty much it. Yeah, you're right, Jim Baker. Yeah, I know. But I said that's what they're going to say, right? <laughs> they're going to keep on this story. They're not going to leave it. They're not leaving their wingman. Um, yeah, so I see a couple of questions here on the uh, indicators. Uh, the trading view... You can use the free version, uh, not for day trading, but you can use it. I, I think you can only put three indicators at a time. And we have some script for the moving averages, so you can use that. But the best is the pro. I think it's 30 bucks a month or something. If you get the pro version, and if you're not day trading, you don't have to pay up to get the live, um, you know, real-time quotes. And that'll, that'll go. All right, thanks. Uh, Let's take a look and let's go over and let's go over here and look at this board here. Uh, ten year back to 405, 406. Yeah, it's it's interesting that spread between the 1030 has really been interesting to watch today. We're looking at uh, the five year is still negative, so we got a little steepener going on. I haven't put this up for a while. Let's put it up here. So you can see there's been some steepening in the curve uh, lately, but not not a lot. There's still yeah. This is right here. Hang on. This is the 10:30. This got really inverted, and now now it's coming back in. But it, overall, I think this must be weekly time frame. Let me just see. Yeah. So if we go to a daily, you'll be able to see a little more of this movement. So you see a little more drastic movement in, in that curve there. This is the 530s. If I go over here and put this on daily, matter of fact, it might be on daily. Hang on. Yeah, that is daily. Let's go weekly. Yeah, you see a little more of the extreme of the inversion that's been going on that everybody's talking about. Back to uh, five minute. Five minute says little bounce back in again. And maybe we hold the bottom end of the market grid and then some uh, looks like potential improvement uh, coming into the close. You can see the, the 10 period moving average. I'm just going to blow this up just a little bit so you can see it. You can see that almost the curvature and the average is starting to curve up. So it looks like we could rally back to that level. It is 09. That was the old low. 3809. So maybe we can get back to that. And uh, the real question is, as we're coming in for the last few minutes, is the, um, you know, what's the end of the day going to look like as far as we're going to get some shirt covering or something like that?
Just looking at comments, folks. Let me go back to the one. We're going to stay with the one into the close here, folks. Let me get this. We actually have some uh, projections on the upside to 21. I, that seems somewhat far-fetched. Augos are basically stable to slightly up. We're trading above the 21. Maybe we can get to 05, 09, those numbers there. Don't see a lot going on as far as that goes. Thanks, Steve Wilson. Sandy, thanks. A little pressure coming in here. Let's go over to the uh, level two screen. Let's watch that. Let me get off screen here. Yeah, so pretty ugly charts, folks. Trading under the eight handle. Absolutely zero liquidity here in the in the order book. So very very erratic trading. Nothing really there at all. When you get into uh, days like today, there's just so much, so much pressure uh, on the, on the downside. No one wants to square up. We'll see what kind of activity we get. <laughs> Conservative Joe, that is absolutely hilarious, and that goes along the lines of what I've talked about before. The Fed has no clue what's going to happen next. Uh, they're just they're the guys throwing the rocks in the pond that I was talking about earlier, if you, you were watching. So the, the point of everything that's, um, that's happening from the standpoint of uh, the recession, no recession, they don't have a clue. And in fact, if you look back at the dot plots, and I talked about this last meeting, if you went back a year ago, nobody had any dot plots talking about anything over 0.75 uh, for the Fed funds. Nobody had three. No one had four. No one had anything about where we are. They had no clue then. They have no clue now. And it's not unbelievable because they've pretty much always, uh, I think they've been like this since Bernanke, I think. Uh, Greenspan was a little different. Volcker was a little different. There were different challenges that were going on. And I've always said that every Fed chair has these challenges. And the only one that got away with their tenure without it was Janet Yellen. Nothing happened under her watch. But it was like in between after the GFC and then coming into kind of this no man's land uh, before we got into the, the era of, Paul, of Jay Powell. And look at this, new lows on the day, folks. S 78 printed. So there's a little bit of a theory. It's kind of hard in an illiquid book here. But typically when you bounce more than five handles, 500 points off of a low, so we printed 78, and now we're trading 83, this will be critical to watch as we come into the last 10 minutes. That, that was probably the low of the session, and we'll see some recovery, nothing Important. Looks like we're going to go out below 38 handle. The five minute, the webs on the five minute are about as ugly as they get. 
we got into a, a formation. If you can see where my cursor is here is a formation that's called a rope. And we're still in that, that rope, so there's no way out of here. I'm printing 80. We're two handles off the lows. The one minute pattern is getting some crossovers on the webs, which maybe we're, we're trying to set up a low, but you know, I, I think the market's got the message. We haven't broke, the message should be, we haven't broken anything yet. We're not done because we haven't broken anything. Oh, uh, okay, Moon Cactus. I was wondering where you were. So, yeah, we're getting uh, some really crazy prints here. Look at the, all of a sudden, this is something I talk about in the live room all the time, is tick volume, not so much the volume. We just print a new low. There's new lows coming in. And you start to see a tick volume and click up. This is like 10 minutes out. And we just click down to 75, back to 80. But there is nothing in this order book, folks. You had 300 to buy. You would bid this thing to 82, 83. At yeah, 3747 is probably going to be a key number for me. We'll see what I come up with for tonight's video. Pre printing new low again. Get a slight new low and a bounce. There's 270 bid in the book at 75 even. See if they're real. See if, it, if they can print through that. Here we go again. Looks like they're trying to print it. There it goes. One tick off. Two two fifty to buy. Seventy five even held for a second. Looks like they took out the two fifty. Trying to print new lows here. Nothing in the, uh, the order book's actually uh, getting a little thicker now, meaning that there's few more bids uh, of size on both bid and ask on both sides. 75 so far is holding uh, 70 bid there to buy. Oh, then they just blow it out, 72. Yeah, let's take a look. Let's go over here and just see what the, uh, if there's any, any targets here. Let's go to the five minute. So he printed 69, heavy selling coming in. Yeah, Marson, I think I pronounced your name right. I totally agree. This dollar shortage is real, and it is going to just destroy everything. Now, I'm talking secular bull markets. Um, answer is 3,500 um, isn't the isn't the um, the critical number on the longer term charts.
How do you know I'm not? So pretty good reversal off of R2 today, folks. I don't trade on on um, on YouTube, only in a private room. So sixty eight fifty printed low. Basically, that trade that we put on at thirty seven seventy one is even now. New lows again, 625. Need a, about a 72.50. Maybe we get a little bounce coming into the close here. Maybe some covering up. Coming right back at the lows again, trying to. I'll go suggesting that this bar is pretty close to the final down tick here for on the five minute. Bar's already turned green. Let's go back over to there. So here we are in all this excitement down 2.37, down 91 handles on the S&P. And think about this, in on my screen here on a five minute chart, the high bar was 39.07, 125 points ago. Going all the way back when it was in the 90s, it was projecting down into the 20s, we didn't get the zigzag formation. We got we got the zag, but not the zag. <laughs> and market just went straight down again. So we're getting a little bit of a, a bounce as we come into the close, if you want to call it that. Just a, a stabilization here at the moment. The uh, key numbers are going to be up at the top end of this this range here, at 70, 77 plus. If we print it over that, you might see a little more recovery. Yeah, printing 72s, no bounce to be found. Everybody's negative. Everybody's selling. Yeah, it's a good thing, uh, uh, Boris, if you're using our software right now, we still have, on our intermediate models, are still heavy in cash. I believe uh, excess of 60 plus percent in cash right now. So you just have to lower your exposure. So oh, just kind of stabilizing here, folks.
Yeah, uh, Craig, well, it, it's true, but the uh, the problem is that it's going to ultimately destroy the entire system. Yeah, I just mentioned um, Larry B. Just mentioned a uh, 3747. I'll update that tonight. You know, like I said, uh, we're long at 71, 37, 71 on the models. So we just pulled back. We're basically even. So just be interesting. Here we go. Testing lows, new low print, 67. Final minute, folks. This is This is the game right here. There it is. That is that is the close going right out at the lows here on on the cash. Let's flash over, take a look at some of these other screens here. Uh, S&P 3759 down 251. NASDAQ down 3.53 at 10,927. Another failure. Let's go back to this other page here. And just take a look at, at some of this stuff here. So Amazon ended up to be the, the top volume stock on the day. It's, it's down in the dirt, trading 92, well below the, the low that we saw back on the day of the earnings was 97. So we're trading 92. I went through some of these earlier. And you look at uh, Tesla was... Uh, the next stock in line, it's it's down 585. You know, you're looking at Apple down 386. Nobody wants iPhone 14. Meta down another five. Nvidia down two. Uh, going through the alphabet is down 387. Google down 387. They're both the same. Um, the Airbnb got crushed for 13%. Intel down 336. Uber, I think, was a positive, but it turned around. So down 360. It was up on, on news. Uh, interesting. All of these stocks, folks, everyone, a big, big down day, big reversal on. Here on uh, Bank of America, BAC, we got uh, XLE is uh, down 256. Only Boeing, one of the only stocks up. So out of that whole sequence of these whole volume traders, that's, that's what's out there. So, folks, this is going to do it for uh, today's broadcast. I'll see you tonight. Uh, we have tonight and tomorrow night's the final nighttime broadcast. I'll be moving to the day, 9.15 a.m. on Monday. We'll be a live pre-market, and we'll be setting up some expectations, and I'll be going through my technical analysis, everything. A lot of what I do in the normal live Live streams every night will be there on Monday and every day. We'll just be covering them when the market's opening or about to open. Uh, so I think it's going to be a really uh, a, a great new way to run the channel. And I'm looking forward to it. Um, we come in. I just have to change my schedule. Uh, I have to move, move the clocks up. So anyway, thanks for everything, folks. I uh, appreciate it. Yeah, just like in comments. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, make sure before you leave, give me a like. There's still like almost 600 people here. So go ahead and, and hit that like button. And seriously, uh, those of you, I saw a number of orders come through on the indicators. Thank you so much. And uh, look forward to seeing you in a live room and getting you up to speed. There will be a new new video out on the the AR, the all goes for the PPMs and
we'll get that out to you right away. So anyway, folks, thanks again. I'm going to sign out. Look forward to seeing you tonight. Thanks a lot.